When I think about high-end car audio, I'm thinking about a couple things. I'm thinking I need speakers. I'm thinking I need amplifiers, subs, of course, and of course, DSP to tie everything together. One said brand that checks off all these boxes is Arc Audio. Today, we have the pleasure of having Fred Lynch himself join us to give us a breakdown on all the products available, but more importantly, a couple new ones that just dropped that you need to know about. This is CMA Networks brought to you by SiriusXM, all about Arc Audio, and it starts now. What's going on, everybody? And thanks for tuning in to another CMA Network session brought to you by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu, and today we've got a lively one. In fact, we have Arc Audio. It's always fun to have Fred Lynch from Arc join us because this is a technology company that's always innovating new goodies for you guys out there to take advantage of. Now, Fred, we've got a, a stack show today. Can you give us a quick preview of what we're going to be covering on today's episode? What's up, Ben? You know what? We're going to cover a few things today. Uh, you know, one of the things, of course, is our new Nighthawk amplifier that we just released to complement the Blackbird. We're going to talk about the Blackbird amplifier itself, which is just doing super, super well in the market right now. Great responses, great feedback, and just high demand for that product. We're also going to talk about our RS speakers, uh, which accord of course, is award-winning within all of our competition groups, as well as also just the demand from our dealers is uh, very quickly turning us into not just an amplifier company, but a high-end speaker company as well. Then, of course, then we've got uh, our new DNA software, which is used to control all of our uh, new Pro Series DSPs. And last but not least, our number one selling subwoofer, the A-Series subwoofer shallow uh, shallow line. Use it for trucks and everything. Just uh, like I said, we've got a few things to cover today. Well, Fred, I'm certainly pumped because uh, I got a chance to see some of these products. Now we get to share it with you guys, and we're going to dig right in. But before that, a quick opportunity for our sponsor, SiriusXM, with a video that proves that dealers love it. And when we come back, we're going to dig right in with Fred Lynch from Arc Audio. Hey, guys. Ricky Lima here from SiriusXM. I had a chance to speak to some dealers and ask them what they love about selling SiriusXM. Here's what they had to say. Coast to coast coverage. I love SiriusXM for commercial free music. It's a great add on sale and a profit opportunity. We love selling Sirius XM because you can listen to the same channel coast to coast. Profitability and ease of installation. It's a no brainer. We love selling Sirius XM for its ease of installation, great profitability, and its reliability. People love it. Welcome back, everybody. We're going to get right into it. Now, Fred, you touched on a really hot topic right now. Arc Audio amplifiers have always been popular, but with the recent introduction of these new small, compact footprint, multi-channel DSP integrated amplifiers, such as the Blackbird, mm -hmm. we now have a companion amplifier in the new Nighthawk. Can you tell us all about it? Oh, well, you're right, Ben. The, the Blackbird amplifier, when we released it, was a phenomenal uh, introduction for size and power, feature set, and just expansion ability. But one of the things that everybody was asking for is they wanted even more power, specifically for big mid-base applications or even subwoofer applications. But they wanted that companion application, something that they could use for the installs, look the same, uh, obviously without taking up a lot of real estate. And that was one of the things with the Blackbird program um, that was uh, a necessity. So, I mean, one of the things we did is we came out with this Nighthawk amplifier. This only started shipping a couple of weeks ago, but it's, uh, you know, the, the Nighthawk is simply, it's the same exact chassis as the Blackbird, uh, compact in form, same heat sink design. So for installers that want to do a, a full trunk or do a full display on the amp rack, they can do that with this and actually have it look together. But I mean, what is the Nighthawk? It's a two-channel amplifier. There's no DSPs, no nothing in here. Uh, this thing will sit there and run bridged. At, we rated it at 800 watts. It actually delivers quite a bit more than that at 4 ohms or 2 ohms. And it has stereo capability from 4 ohms all the way down to 1 ohm stereo. Um, so this thing makes it ideal if you want to run a couple of these for like a real high power three-way system uh, and you want to run 400 watts to a mid-base driver. Um, I'm not going to shame on that because I do that myself. Um, or you want to bridge it out to uh, 800 watts. But this thing's over 94% efficient. So it works extremely well with the charging systems on uh, many of today's OEM vehicles and uh, just simply gives you a ton of power. The thing runs very cool. 
and uh, you know just enough flexibility uh, to you know, be a companion off of the DSP Blackbird to give you everything you need in a, a high-end system or even a street system. I got to be honest, Fred, when I first seen the Blackbird come out, I kind of already foresee the future and saw forecasted the fact that there's going to probably be something uh, like the Nighthawk to, you know, really complement that that system and finish it off with some big power to subwoofers. But we have to talk about the Blackbird because it's such a feature packed, unique device that answers a lot of um, problems and challenges today. You mentioned it, you know, small footprint, uh, multi-channel power. Uh, clean power, of course, and DSP integration as well. So perfectly suited for a lot of OEM integration scenarios. Please speak to us about the the, the feature-packed um, Blackbird amplifier. Well, you're right, Ben. The, the Blackbird is a, a very, very concentratedly feature-packed product. Um, you know, in the same chassis, you know, we talk about it. Of course, here's here's the Nighthawk, and here's the Blackbird. Very similar until you look at the ends on it, and you can see that there's a, a difference in the feature sets. Uh, as far as the plugs go but you know one of the things with the blackbird was is we had to keep it small we had to be able to make it efficient and we had to make sure that this whole uh, this whole package can truly deliver the power and the features that people want um yeah, it, over 92 percent efficiency on the amplifier uh the thing doesn't generate a ton of heat and for what heat it does uh, i mean one of our flex demo vehicle we've got three of the blackbirds sitting behind a factory panel and um, you know, just the cooling, ver the efficiency versus the cooling capability of the amplifier is a true testament to the design. You know, pulls in the air right here down on the side, turn around, takes it internally from in here, and then it blows out these back vents on here and it's internally fan cooled. So it's kind of a force induction cooling. Uh, these things run super efficient. But the, the thing is, is whenever we design an amplifier, the term is it's a piece of wire with gain. And the reason why we say that is because we design our amplifiers not to have any sonic effect uh, on the way the music sounds. Well, in this case, you know, this is a, we rate it at 85 watts a channel. It does, it does produce more than that. You can read any of the reviews that are out there on it. Um, but, you know, of course, we've got a plug on here for your eight channels of output, which is all bridgeable. So you can get a lot more power out of here if you need to for bridged outputs. It's all controllable in there. We also have the um, digital, it's called the BTM input. Um, this is for our Bluetooth dongle, um, or you can use it for even OEM integration on some of today's digital systems as is digital over copper. And you can use the AR Maestro on this piece as well. We have the PSC controller, so you can do standard control capability. We have optical input. So this thing technically has the, uh, the optical input right in uh, right in here and then we also have the digital coaxial through the BTM input as well too so you can you know any of your high res media players this thing has so many bells and whistles for so many different options um, you know including the, uh, the the big one that's really taken a uh, uh, taken a flagship approach towards the way we do our integration is with the AR module which is this guy here from my data maestro take this thing plug it in and uh, I mean, talk about everything from, um, you know, Ford to Chrysler, uh, some of the GMs and so on. And uh, coming soon, we even have a, you know, a to B interface coming in with Maestro as well as also most. So that's going to open up all your Ford B&O systems uh, and even a lot of your G uh, GM most. Uh, I mean, it goes on and on. We're talking thousands of vehicle applications that you can plug and play these things into uh, factory systems. But, um, you know, add additional amplifiers, full DSP control, eight volts out on the, on the RCA outputs on there. And of course, where a lot of manufacturers will try to rate their power at say one and two percent to put a big number or do impulse power testing which isn't realistic to how we listen to music um you know all of our stuff is tested and uh, certified at 0.05 percent thd so we're getting a real real power number for musical power and uh, anything above that is icing on the cake giving you the old saying under promise over deliver so we're over delivering to our customers and giving them the most features and most power they can get out of this product uh, versus our competitors of course, Fred, we could go on for another half hour easy just talking about these two amplifiers right here, but we got a show to put on and we got product to show off. So, of course, next on the list is something that you touched on maybe last year, but now it's here, compact DSP in the brand new PSM Pro. Fred, Fred tell us all about it. Yeah, we sneak peeked the PSM Pro. Uh, I want to say it's about six or seven months ago. Um, it's been out now for about a month. And uh, I mean, super compact size, all plug and play connectivity on here. 
you know, we did the plug and play connectivity for a couple of reasons. And that is, is uh, especially with the, uh, like the IDATA Maestro OEM capability on here, we wanted to be able to give the Harley Davidson guys a solution. So in this case, um, you can actually take uh, IDATA Maestro, you could take the AR module, basically this guy here, take the Harley harness, plug it into here, and you can take the IDATA harness and plug it directly into the input. So it's a locking connection. There's no variations, it's all plug and play. And uh, now with the Harley Davidsons, you can even get uh, no base processing, 20 to 20 flat response, four volt out. It's the ideal signal and it doesn't affect any of the OEM warranty issues. You don't have to deal with programming radios. There's no flash responses needed by USB sticks or going into the dealer and having them flash things. The PSM Pro is so small that you can stick it up in the front of a motorcycle fairing or even better yet, let's get out of the motorcycle market and look at the high-end market. This has all of our new features of our new DNA software. Uh, which uh, we'll go over here in a little bit. But this product here simply is, it's a full feature, full function DSP, gives you all the bells and whistles you need, crossovers, equalization, all pass filters on every band within the EQ, full uh, parametric. We give you additional bands for custom programming, global capability, uh, time alignment up to 30 milliseconds and 0.01 millisecond increments, 180 degrees phase. The list goes on and on and on. We even have OEM features in here for integration, like doing dual source digital and analog. We do OEM navigation, uh, interface navigation, ducking, digital auto detect. I mean, we can be here for the next uh, six hours, but I mean, literally this thing is everything that our biggest, bigger processors have as far as bells and whistles with just a few additional ch hardware channel modifications on it and reduction, which is good for most vehicles. You got an exotic car, not a lot of room, shove this thing in it. You need more base, but don't want to put more stress on the drivers like an exotic with a single eight our super base functions in here. This is everything that you look for in the big ones, but you can just shove it away and hide it and have it as a great resource without occupying all that real estate. This is really a powerful piece and it really underestimates, uh, the, the looks underestimate what it can do. And uh, honestly, once again, like everything else, it's transparent in its sonic signature. It doesn't reproduce what it shouldn't and it gives you all the power you need to make the system sound the way that is most important, which is the way the driver wants it. So, so far this show, Fred, we've already touched on DSP on a couple of different occasions, obviously just talking about the Blackbird, but not only the Blackbird, of course, we talked about the PSM Pro, but there's also a new version of the DNA DSP software that has recently been released. Can you share with us some of the updates that are really going to make a difference for users moving forward? Yeah, Ben, we just released the DNA software when we released the PSM Pro. Um, and it was kind of out of necessity on there because we had a lot of people asking for a lot of expandability. Um, they wanted to be able to use it on other devices. Well, they wanted also more of a simplistic all-in-one flexibility of the software, and that's kind of where the new DNA software comes in. Uh, like I said, there currently is a uh, function out there right now, a uh, format of the DNA software that was the original release. It works on the Blackbird as well as also on the, uh, the PSM Pro. And uh, we're actually what we're going to sneak peek here uh, just a little bit today is a preview of the new updates of the DNA software. Um, give you a little, we'll talk about the features and functions of it. We're not going to go into super detail on there, but it, it's really cool with the changes we did just because we were addressing a lot of the issues that people were you know, saying, uh, hey, they didn't like going and having an individual piece of software for each piece of product. Uh, ultimately, this is one piece of product that will work on everything. Uh, from the PSM Pro to the IPS 8.8 to the Blackbird uh, to um, yeah, all all the new Pro Series DSPs. Basically, you plug it in, it populates for what features and functions you have on that particular product. You plug in for a PSM Pro, it only shows the features and functions for a PSM Pro. Plug in for a PSA, it shows the PSA. Plug into a Blackbird, it shows all 12 channels for the Blackbird. Just really unique, um, you know, and uh, kind of following the, the industry needs of what our customers are asking for. Um, so the software, you know, we actually had to step in and hire in um, uh, for some additional assistance. We have a gentleman now working with us that does code writing for uh, Microsoft apps and programs on there. So you know, one of the things we realized after doing a little bit more market research was that we have a lot of people that are using tablets. Uh, we have people that are using a wide scale of different resolutions and screens. So, you know, this here, what you're seeing is all four of the, you know, this is the main window right here. This is our meters. This is a plot window. 
Uh, this is also our mixer assistant, but you know, the big one here is this screen right here. But as you can see, we can you know, drag adjust any size we want. It'll auto scale as well to whatever the resolution of the, the screen is. In this case, you know, the other a couple of big things we have in here is right in here. Um, you know, we're, we've incorporated quick assist into it. So it's a, it's a license free uh, assist program to where we can remote in and do hands on support if we need to, as well as we have expanded the amount of information that we have available through our email support system too. Um, one of the cool things in here now as well is if you plug in and you're hooked up to the internet, uh, this whole section in here up, up links to the cloud and it'll look at the current active versions on here. So latest is currently where um, you know, what's available online. This is where we're at right now doing a bunch of updates. Um, and this is actually, if you look up here in the top right hand corner, it says pre-release version because we're testing for a bunch of new features and functions. Um, so this is, you know, this is all auto. You plug in, it'll say, hey, you need to update this. Hey, you need to update that. Really automated in that aspect and it always keeps people up to date so they can get the latest and greatest features and functions. Um, you know, one of the big areas that's uh, uh, that was updated in here has to do with Maestro. Um, this unit here isn't connected to Maestro, but if you notice, you have all the channel names over here on the left hand side and on the outside. Um, so now when you hook up Maestro, uh, so you're not guessing what channels are what on the front input. If you uh, come over here off the left hand side, as soon as Maestro does the handshake where it talks between the OEM vehicle and the AR module and the DSP, it'll actually self label what the inputs are. So if it's front left or front right, rear left, rear right, or audio left, audio right, or chimes, navigation prompt, cell phone communication, that'll label everything on there so you can actually track through panels like this so you can see how Maestro is changing the mixer on the inputs. Um, you know, other areas, of course, is, you know, we've got this all updated in here, but this is where a lot of the big features come in. Um, this is just one, you know, one panel right here. Of course, we have the labels and names over here, but go into the equalization. Once we go into EQ, you've got everything lined up in here. This is all your 31 bands of equalization, but the interesting part now is if you look, the numbers up here across the top, you know, we realized some people still wanted to have the 31 bands of equalization, but they wanted more. So now we have six additional channels of equalization over here on the output that don't affect any of the global tuning capabilities where you can tune all the channels at once. And here you can actually select, uh, you know, parametric, all pass two, all pass one, low shelf and high shelf filters on every one of these bands. But maybe you need more, you can still do that out here on the 31 bands. So we're talking, oh, you know, we're talking over 300 bands of potential tuning capability by frequency, by band, and in most cases by Q. Um, we've also added over here going into settings. Um, we've got multiple settings. We have device settings over here now. Um, so we've kind of restructured this. Here's all your spit up auto detect and um, how to act between presets for things like uh, digital detect switch to or digital loss. So you can go back and forth between a digital, like if you're doing a high resolution, resolution media player, um going into the digital coaxial input you can do that through there and have everything auto detect you can come in over here on your preset settings and you know label all the names you can identify navigation ducking so if you have a uh, you know if you have a portable media media player but your oem system is still uh doing uh you know factory navigation cell phones the system will change over to your oem system using navigation ducking so you can use those navigation prompt commands or even cell phone communication bridging you can do lockout here so you can actually uh, encrypt and secure your connection uh to your processor so other people can't play with it especially if you're dealing with things like the wi-fi we also have an up mixer built into it and for some of those uh you know factory systems or even aftermarket systems that have noisy outputs at zero bit we have a programmable um customizable uh, noise gate system in here which is unique it doesn't have the problems that other brands do where you know you're chopping out the first like half of a word or something like that when it comes in um same thing and you know, i'll output the sp panel we have everything here but one of the cool parts about it is especially with the uh integration capability on here up here is the maestro panel for volume control so you can actually customize the volume control circuit for uh the system have you ever had one of those systems where you put in an aftermarket uh integration module and you turn it up one click and it's too loud or maybe you have to turn it it goes up to 30 and you have to turn it up to 15 before you get any volume you can restructure your minimum and your maximum volume control in here and even the best part about it is from a shop standpoint, so you have a customer that they only know the maximum volume 
uh, you know, of the system, you can actually throttle back the top volume to keep customers out of a potential distortion zone that can cause damage to a system. But, you know, the, the list goes on and on and on. We have a whole bunch of new tools, plot, the mixer assistant over here. So if you want a visual representation of how to guide your signal from your input to your outputs, that's all in here. We also have an input gain wizard and the input gain wizard this little pop-up panel here, you can run pink noise into it, click on what channels you want to do, and it'll actually auto set the gains and do auto matching. Um, we also have other tools in here, like we have a signal generator built in. So if you're looking for anything from like uh, resonant frequency noise issues, uh, looking for the transfer function of the vehicle, or you're doing frequency-based tuning, you can use this in here. Preset notes, you want to customize what your presets are, you can come in, basically set the notes uh, for whatever you want on here. And at that point, when you hover over it down here, it'll actually populate to remind you what those DSP settings are. Um, we also, for those that love REW, um, you can use REW to create a tune response curve and you can import your uh, REW settings directly into the processor and it will auto adjust everything for you. We also have an AB test where you can rapidly do uh, A to B conversion um, between the, you know, your presets so you can compare them quickly. Uh, and then we also have what's called center point in here. And center point is, uh, is a great little feature to where, oh, hey, I've got everything dialed in, but I'm still just a little bit to the right. It'll take your stereo channels that you select of your choice, and it'll actually shift your stage over to the left or right, depending on how you adjust it. And for diagnostic purposes, we've actually enabled 100% full logging capability in here. So you can enable the logging. And when you submit over a tech support report, we can actually see 100% of all the communications going between uh, the computer as well as also uh, the uh, uh, in the DSP. And we can see everything going on in the DSP. So if there is that issue, we have a better chance of being able to reproduce it and getting an update out there quickly. Tons of tons of little features and functions. But once again, you still have to be able to put in the time to learn how to use it, though. Awesome new features on that DNA software. But we've talked about amplifiers. Uh, we talked about DSP. Now let's get into some speakers because, I mean, Arc Audio has got some pretty nice speakers that guys should really take a closer look at in their RS series. What are some of the details, Fred, that make these RS speakers something to consider? You know, when we started getting in uh, to the speaker market back in 2012, a lot of people always thought we were just an amplifier company. Um, and uh, just in a few short years, we've really been able to take a lot of steps forward with our X2 line. We originally had an ARC 6000 series line. And of course, in 2018, uh, I teamed up with a couple of gentlemen over in Denmark, a couple of very, very well-known, renowned, uh, high-end audio uh, transducer engineers, and we teamed up on what is now known as the RS line. And the RS line, of course, uh, acronyms for reference series, uh, was um, a 100%, you know, custom design from scratch. Uh, speaker system designed for DSP applications, active systems, for people who wanted something that was affordable, but yet truly focused on the high-end market compared to the you know multi-thousand dollar, you know three thousand, six thousand, eight thousand dollar speaker systems that are out there. You know, for example, this is our RS3, very shallow, very compact. Um, of course, the funny thing is, is everybody makes jokes about the, uh, they call it the orange juicer. And ironically enough, that's exactly where the inspiration of that, um, that center dome came from. The best part is, you know, how many of us have had things like custom pillars up there without a grill on it? Uh, and, you know, your kid is playing around or whatever. And of course, they start doing like that. Well, of course, I call this my uh my child proof dust cap because you can't push it in but um you know the whole thing about the rs speakers is it was designed for uh and with the intent of the high-end user and my the high-end audiophile actually in mind and so of course we came out with a, a fully designed basket we tooled all these up um you know we do all the high temperature testing and all the high temperature design of the voice coils so these things can handle a lot more uh, power than what they than what they need but of course you know low profile motors using neodymium motors so that way we can make sure that we have less issues with fitment due to you know, larger diameter uh, driver magnets 
the, all the voice coils and stuff are all done on what's called a temper-based uh, cooking process. And all of our RS drivers, as well as all of our other speakers too, um, require what's called a four times full range step up power test, meaning that we have to be able to take the rated power four times for program for eight hours without having a voice coil failure, assuring that they can handle things like temperature, thermal, um, you know, just more or less abuse. Um, as a result, we don't see uh, nearly the amount of things like burnt voice coils that um, a lot of brands or even in our past lines we have. And that's the same technology that's carried over into our motorcycle, our motorcycle CX series line, our Moto 602 HDs, even our X2s. These, these speakers right now uh, are being used by all of our competitors in the um, West Coast Car Audio, East Coast Car Audio um, uh, uh, competition groups, as well as also IASCA, EMMA, MECCA. Uh, worldwide, and we got guys winning with these things all over the place. They are very, very transparent in the way they sound. They're not a colored design, and they're definitely designed for the audio environment with all the environmental treatments to keep them uh, safe from uh, weather. Uh, you know, in uh, the open environment that we see things like door panels or even kick panels, uh, some people cut them out to the outside for ventilation, which is truly unneeded. These things work great in small sealed enclosures or even um, uh, uh, apiarotic uh, style enclosures as well too, but we have these available in three inch and four inch. But for the guy, for anybody who's looking for a true high end reference audio uh, experience, these things uh, they're not going to break the bank. They're going to give you the sound that you want, and uh, you know these things have been a true testament, winning shows and just wowing people who listen to it. Uh, you had a chance to listen to them in the Flex as well as also in Brian's Cadillac at a couple of the events this year, um, and it's just been uh, the feedback has been extremely overwhelming. From you know, the funny part is even at shows like Knowledge Fest or CMA when we were up there, it's not just the feedback from the customers. It's even the feedback from the other vendors who get in the car to take a listen to it. And uh, even some speaker manufacturers saying, what are these? And um, it's a little bit of a wake call, especially for the price. So uh, RS speakers, they've been around for about four and a half years now, and we're not changing them. In fact, we're actually looking at a, a future involvement to uh, uh, expand that line further. And last but not least, Fred, I couldn't let you leave here today if we didn't spend a little bit time on those A-series shallow subwoofers that were released not too long ago. And yes, they've become super popular. We see them in some reference systems, um, but dealers need to know about them. And no better person to explain the benefits <clears throat> of these A-series subwoofers than Fred Lynch. Yeah, Ben. I mean, the A-series subwoofers, uh, we've had them out now for just a little over a year, and they're very quickly turning into our top-selling sub. Uh, we actually have some OEM companies that are doing custom vehicle designs that the A10, for example, is a very target driver for them. Super small airbase, super small airspace, tons of output, great quality, great output. Um, it's a very, it's a, it's a phenomenal balance of sound quality, but yet street base pretty much could deliver anything you want on there. For example, you know, here's the, <clears throat> here's the A10, uh, the eight, you know, the 10 inch itself has a two, uh, two and a half inch voice coil. The 12 inch has a three inch voice coil. Same thing as with a lot of our drivers, it has to pass a very abusive power step up testing on there. So it gives us uh, a much higher thermal power handling of these drivers. So, you know, what's that do for dealers and customers? Improves reliability, gives you the ability, um, if you have to, put a little bit more stress on them. They're designed to take a beating, but <clears throat> obviously, you know, nothing's indestructible. Um, the 10 itself on there, we recommend about 0.6 to 0.65 cubic foot, but they actually do run in smaller. For example, in our uh, flex that we have, we have three of these in 1.3 cubic foot gross combined on a sealed enclosure running off of a, a thousand watt amplifier right now. And the things just pound. Um, the 12 itself, you can range from anywhere from about 0.85 up to about 1.2 cubic foot. Just, it's funny because they're really misleading and how they look. It gives you the sound quality. We have a ton of these guys uh, out in the lanes right now that are running these up in the front, uh, doing front subwoofers on there because the subwoofer boxes are so small. They don't take up a lot of space. They can beat on them, get the output that they need out of them for that truly acoustical and emotional experience. But when they need to hit some numbers and have something that uh, can perform and give a, call it the, the, the street base, um, these things deliver everything in one package on there. In fact, actually, these have been so successful, it's actually forcing the redevelopment of a couple other uh, subwoofers that we have to make some steps up in it. Um, but these are available in dual two and dual four ohm. 
Um, the, like I say, huge voice coils, huge power handling. They give you everything you need as far as uh, street boom, sound quality reference. It appeases to just about every customer out there. They're very reasonably priced. And uh, right now, this is actually, like I say, this is our number one selling subwoofer uh, line that we have out of all of our subwoofer lines right now. So A-series sub, definitely truck enclosures, behind the seat enclosures, under seat enclosures. Th these things are ideal for just about every application. And that, of course, was Fred from ARC Audio giving us all the details and more on some of the new products that ARC Audio has come up with. Now, if you want more detailed information, I encourage you to check out their website at arcaudio.com. And if you happen to be a Canadian dealer tuning in, then you need to know that Importel has been for a while now the exclusive distributor for all things ARC Audio in Canada. On that note, of course, I have to reach out to my good friend and 12-volt Viking Jaron Gelmelon to get his input and Canadian perspective when it comes to Arc Audio. Now, Jaron, Arc Audio is a big brand. It's It's got a lot of reputation, a lot of technology built in with a great offering. I'd like to hear in your words what Arc Audio means to Importel as an offering. Certainly, Arc Audio is a, a huge part of the Importel brand name. Uh, they've been a great partner for many, many years of Importel. Uh, certainly, we talked about some of the new exciting products and some of the higher end products from arc today but we we don't want to forget that it's a vast product line uh there's also x2 amplifiers which are kind of our bread and butter within the industry we we move a ton of those they're great footprint great power for the price you get uh x2 speakers so arc has that complete full offering for the dealers whether a customer walks in and wants a high high-end reference series build or if they're just looking for a better better sound quality out of the system, but not looking to break the bank, uh, Arc Audio has a solution for you. And I think that's what makes a great partner in this industry. And certainly in Canada, it's our go-to. So you saw Fred and he discussed and kind of brought to the, to the forefront those two amplifiers, right? Of course, I'm talking specifically about the Blackbird and the Nighthawk. I'd like to hear your uh, um, feedback on that small footprint, multi-channel kind of design. Is that what Canadian dealers are looking for um, when it comes to you know either OEM integration kind of scenarios or even higher end builds? Yeah, certainly the small footprint of the Blackbird amplifier, along with the Nighthawk, because they have matching chassis, is a go-to for a lot of high-end builds because people aren't looking to devote their whole space to, in their trunk to audio builds anymore and not have a trunk. They're still needed. So having a compact amplifier and a multi-channel amplifier uh, is a necessity when building these high-end builds. And the OEM integration options within the Blackbird and tweaks that you can do with Maestro AR, uh, high level input, spit of input, uh, so many options within that amplifier. And then to add the night Nighthawk to it, whether you want sub output or a high powered mid bass up front, uh, just goes to show the thought process behind Arc Audio and the need for those ever growing, changing products. Uh, it's great to see and having a matching, we knew it was coming, but the matching footprint so that if you do want to show it off in a competition style build, uh, the footprint's there to be and make a nice overall system for the customer. Now, Jaron, of course, Arc Audio is synonymous with DSP and like the Blackbird it has integrated DSP, but also we discussed on today's show that brand new tiny little box called the PSM Pro. Arc Audio makes no qualms about it. They are saying right here, right now, it's all about the engineering, the design. They do it right here. There's no marketing fluff. This is it. How does that translate into something that dealers are attracted to when it comes to the no mess, no BS type of attitude that Arc Audio is portraying? Yeah, the PSM Pro, that's a, a great tiny little piece that has a lot of power to it. To only have a small, small chassis that has multiple ways to integrate into a factory system and not taking up a lot of space like fred mentioned harley as one one go-to for that this psm pro dsp and and still the power within this dsp it's still a full feature dsp we're not just giving you a, a basic dsp where it's just okay you get a few crossover points a few eq points to add to a system no it's a full feature dsp and the ability to still use an AR with it, uh, I think just goes to show the power 
of Arc Audio and the no the no BS marketing stuff. Uh, uh, you saw in the DSP software when Frank was, or Fred was going through it to show all the different options and stuff and little tweaks that you can do here and there. And it, it's going to take you quite a while to learn every tweak and every little nuance to the software, certainly. But it goes to show that they, the team has run into these issues and found fixes for these issues. And it's no BS because, hey, we've seen a problem. Here's We found a solution to the problem. It just goes to show how great and how hands-on they are, as Fred talks about, built in the U.S., manufactured in the U U.S. built. Uh, certainly goes to show their involvement, and that's why ARC Audio makes a great product. I want to take this opportunity and thank both Fred Lynch from ARC Audio as well as Jaron Jelmalan from Importel for joining us today. And really, in my closing thoughts, what I want to say here is ARC Audio is truly that brand that cares about what they put out, puts in the time, the engineering, the resources, the development right here in the USA to get that product to dealers. N are they the company that might have the best packaging? Probably not. Do they have shiny posters and stickers and graphics all over their ads? No. But do they have full features that have been really thoroughly thought out based on feedback from you guys? Absolutely. And I think that's you're going to find that theme throughout the entire ARC Audio line, whether it be the RS series speakers to the new PSM Pro DSP, right through to the Blackbird and Nighthawk that just came out. And that for sure is something that lends its strength to what ARC Audio is about in delivering that transparent sound that uh, they preach so much. That's it for this CMA Networks production brought to you by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Well, until next time, we connect. There's never been a better time to have Sirius XM with over 150 channels in your vehicle. Your Platinum Plan offer includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels and enjoy favorite shows with Sirius XM video on demand. What you love is on now.